Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. Today is October 9th, and it's the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you very much. Yesterday we celebrated the life of Gary Wiegan with his burial in our adjacent cemetery. And uh, please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers as we go forward. I um, want to say how amazed I am when I uh, left yesterday afternoon. There was people and tables and chairs all, all over and everything, and I came back, and everything's neat and tidy this morning. So hats goes off to uh, the folks of this congregation that pitch in and put things back together <laughs> again. Very, 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 very nice. So... There is a sign-up sheet for volunteering for November. We're all filled for October, but if you're willing to uh, greet or usher or to serve and be a reader, um, look at the November calendar and sign up. It's on the first round table over here. Okay, um, we've got some announcements this morning, and uh, have Louise Driver. You want to share your information first? I just wanted to share with you, we did noisy offering in September for children make mistakes. <laughs> we bought underwear and sweatpants for the schools. With your generosity and using coal cards and everything, we got 109 pair of underwear and 10 pair of sweats. They will be separate, um, divided between Chatech and Prairie Farm. <laughs> Um, the one for October and November will run two months. It's called Adopt a Family. What we're doing is looking for families that might need a little help over Christmas time. The, the reason we're doing it early is the families will be given gift cards. The reason we're doing this is because it leaves the dignity with the family to purchase for their children. So like dad or mom look at them and they bought the gift. They don't know where the money came from. Kids don't care, but mom and dad don't look at it and figure Louise picked it out. So <laughs> we're doing it that way. Um, we do not give food because there's food banks in all the towns. They can get that if they need it. So if you have a family, a friend, uh, uh, if there's any kind of fundraiser that you know of that we should support, please let us know, any council member, and it is kept confidential. Thank you. Deborah Schieffer has an announcement. Well, I didn't prepare anything, really. <laughs> but I, I, I've had this on my mind. I wanted to give a word of thanks and appreciation to Tom Ebler, Jr. He did a big project that has been needed to be done in the sacristy, we call it, where the pyramids hang, that we hang on the wall, and put the banners. And, and the um, banners just haven't had a really good way to hang. So he's been putting this plan in work in the works, and he finished it this past week, and it, and it took a lot of work. It's it, they all hang really nice. I can you can get at it, pull them off, and put them on as you need. So this door to the sacristy will be open, and if anybody would like to view that project that he did you're welcome to do that. And um, um, otherwise, let's give them a hand. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, after the service this morning, you're welcome to uh, come up here and go through the door into the sacristy, and you can see the, the beautiful job that Tom did for us. 
Uh, church council meets this Tuesday at 6.30. And, uh, you know, guests are welcome to come to that. Just want you to, to know about that. And, um, boy, that's all the announcements I've got. Anybody else have anything to say? Well, of course, you have something to say, but you'll want to sit in front of everybody. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, so we're, li we're still live streaming, and we are hoping that you folks that are watching will participate in worship, too. There's, a, there's power with being together with others. The Holy Spirit touches us, and we've got others, but uh, we're glad that you're watching. But uh, think about joining us uh, in our congregation and worship and uh, experience the life that is here uh, with each other on Sunday morning. But because you are still watching, you're part of our congregation, we want you to know that we love you and care about you. So let's turn around and wave and say good morning to everybody that's watching. Good morning. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. All right, we are ready to begin our worship service, and uh, we're going to stand for the invocation and our opening hymn. We begin today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. together and pray the prayer of the day. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit we may with grateful hearts accomplish that you all would have due for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from King, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 and 3, and 7 through 15. It's about Naaman healed of leprosy by listening to his humble friends. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master. Because of him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served as Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, 
am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he was trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came from his horses and chariot, with his horses and chariots, and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a message to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your fresh flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not... Abana and Farpar, the rivers Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, Wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he turned to the man of God, and he said, All his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 111 responsibly. Responsibly. Gifts of God bring hope and wholeness. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. Wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. Your people the power of your words in giving them the lands of the nation. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your prophets... All of your precepts are sure. We stand fast forever and ever because they are done. You send redemption to your people and command your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. Of the Lord, all who practice this have a good understanding. God praise endures forever. Our second reading today comes from 2 Timothy 2, 8 through 15. We are to remain focused on the primary importance. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffered hardship even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is true. If we have died with him, we also will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved of him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Lepers healed in the borderlands. The Gospel of the Lord according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We had stories read about healing of leprosy and uh, the responses from the individuals that were healed. And so I've titled my sermon today, The Art of Gracefulness, The Art of Grace, Gratefulness. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are given so much in our life, so many little things, and uh, at times so many big things and we know Lord that you are constantly blessing us you are constantly giving us gifts of grace uh, and life and health and peace and joy and forgiveness and a part of the response a human response is to say thankful and we also need to take time to thank you to give our appreciation to you for all that you do for us but help us, O oh Lord, to be grateful, to live a life of gratefulness, not only for all that you give, but for those that come into our life and do things for us at various times and places. Help us to be grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord the Savior, Jesus the Christ. There was a young man who... Uh, went to a seminary, and the seminary was located near Chicago and, of course, over Lake Michigan. Now, it just so happened that uh, while he was in seminary, there was, uh, an, there was an awareness that uh, various ships at different times, because of the sea and the torment, would need some help, and they would blow this horn. Well, one night when he was resting in bed, he heard this horn, and as he came down the stairs, uh, the word got out that uh, a ship had capsized in Lake Michigan, and help was needed. And so, uh, because of his ability to swim, he uh, donned enough clothes and jumped in the cold water and began to find individuals that were in the water. And this young man not only saved one individual, but he kept swimming back and he saved 15 people in this uh, disaster. Now that wasn't, uh, that wasn't everybody. There was a lot of lives that were lost, but he had saved 15. Now unfortunately, because of the cold water and uh, the attempt that he had, he, he suffered a severe illness. It affected his, his lungs. And uh, he was questioned about uh, his experience by a reporter. And so he, uh, he was asked, well, why did you do that? And he said, well, I felt that people needed to be saved. And so I did what I could. And uh, the man said, the reporter said, well, now do you have any regrets about this? And he said, the only regret I have is that none of the people that I saved 
ever said thank you. I want to ponder our attitude of gratefulness this morning. So what is gratefulness? It's the attitude of being thankful. Very simple, the attitude of being thankful. Appre showing appreciation, even expressing appreciation for something that was done to us, probably unexpected or undeserved, but given to us. So this story of the lepers that uh, Jesus tells in our gospel this morning is about individuals who had this leprosy. And as the story is told, these lepers were in a zone, in an area that was in between everything. It was between Samaria and Galilee. It was like a no man's land. Not people, people were not either Galilean or they were not not of Samaria. They were just there. And the reason that they were there is because they could not live anyplace else because of their disease. Leprosy was, is an ugly disease. It misshapes the body. It uh, contorts the body, its ability to perform regularly. And so they were ostracized by many people, and they were in this in-between area. And what does Jesus do? Jesus goes to them. Nobody else would go to them, but he goes to them. And uh, they must have heard the story about Jesus because they hollered out, Jesus, have mercy upon us. In other words, would you heal us of our disease? And Jesus shows compassion on these individuals, and he heals them. And uh, they look at themselves as they begin to walk away, and the disease begins to disappear. The leprosy begins to disappear. And they go on their way, but one, one stops short and goes back and kneels before Jesus and says, thank you. And so Jesus then says, uh, didn't I heal ten, heal 10 of you? Where are the other nine? I don't know, but you have come. Your faith has made you well. Go. What a gospel story. <clears throat> So in studying this text, I noticed uh, that Jesus is traveling between Samaria and Galilee, this no man's land, uh, a place where people are rejected in society. It's where the leopards, lepers live on the outskirts of everything. We're reminded that Jesus is willing to go where others are not willing to go. And through the years in our church, we have supported missionaries. And the missionaries that we support, we don't see them face to face, but we had Pastor Pete that was here. I think he was a missionary. He was sent to places that people did not want to go. And I'm wondering, uh, what are some of the places that are in between around here that we don't want to go? One thought comes to mind, and I know it is correct. It's the memory loss unit in our nursing homes. Nobody likes to go there, but we go there. We go there. In the larger cities, it might be the ghetto and other places uh, between the border between Mexico and the United States where people are want to be in one country and they're not in another in-between area. And that kind of reminds me of my grandparents because my grandparents immigrated from Germany in 1920 and they went to a place called Ellis Island. That was the in-between. They were not in the United States yet. They came from Germany and they had to wait to go through the immigration process to be accepted to be uh, Americans. Other in-between areas are probably the refugee areas, people that are displaced because of wars. And of course, we know everything in the Middle East, many, many refugees, but also in Africa and in Central America. 
Many of the lepers of today are homeless who have no place to live. If you've been in some of our larger cities, and you can even go to Minneapolis, and you will see tent cities, people who have no home. And uh, they're rejected. We look down upon them. There are a lot of places that we don't want to see, and there are places we don't want to visit. So what I'm trying to say is that Jesus goes to the unwanted places. And yes, a part of the ministry is we also go to the unwanted places. So I'm, I'm just thinking the, the, the quilts that we blessed last Sunday, they are going to unwanted places, to the areas that people are displaced and need. Lepers in today's society. But implicit <clears throat> in this story today is, uh, is the relief and the response that is given, the sense of gratitude. And uh, 10%, now I don't know if this equates into today's vocabulary of circumstances, but 10% um, only are grateful. So I'd like you to think about that. Um, are we Grateful? Are we the 90 who are ungrateful, 90 percent who are ungrateful, or the 10 percent who are grateful for things in our life? Now I want you to uh, notice that faith and gratitude go together. Faith and gratitude go together. So if we have faith in Christ, we're able to see things that happen to us as a blessing from God, and we can give thanks. Uh, people who don't have faith don't see this attitude of gratitude. But believers in Christ, knowing what he has done for us, can see God working in mysterious and powerful ways. And the most profound reason for our gratitude is for our salvation. The salvation won for us by Jesus on the cross when he suffered and died. We are saved from sin. We are saved from death. And every day of our life, we walk in that faith knowing that we are saved and we are grateful to Jesus for what he has done for us. He took away the burden of our guilt. And how many of us mess up every day or every week? And Jesus says, if you confess that to me, I will free you of your guilt. You are forgiven because I died in the cross for you. So with our salvation, we can, we can begin this attitude of being grateful. But we need to learn how to do that as we live our life, too, with one another. Being grateful to each other. So I had some interviews <clears throat> that I made while I was chaplain in the nursing home and um, one of the, the questions that I, I asked uh, for those that were living in the home, uh, are you grateful for your life here in the nursing home? And I've got some responses here. One lady, I always take the opportunity to say thank you every time a staff member comes in to help me. Another lady, I'm so grateful for the help I get every day because I simply can't do things that I was used to doing before. Another lady. Every night before I go to bed, I thank God for all the loving care that I receive from so many different people here. And still, <clears throat> another lady. Well, I don't write notes or send cards anymore because my hand is unsteady but I have a phone, and when a family member comes to visit or I get a care or a gift, I call them and I say, thank you. Faith and gratitude go together. Faith and gratitude go together. So the uh, perplexing problem is that why aren't we over 
uh, then why don't we have an overabundance of gratitude or expression? God has blessed us in so many ways. There are some of us who uh, come to church early, and often we sit in the pew. And I can't help but think when they come early to church, they're meditating with God, thanking him for so many things. And so here's a reminder. When we enter this sanctuary, we must remember it is God's house. It is not our house. And in politeness, we should honor and respect those that want to come early and have special time with God. And so if we have conversation, and I know we can't stop ourselves from having conversation, don't do it in the back here. Try to go where it's quieter and those people that are here can worship and pray and take that time with God that they need. And in so doing, we are showing gratefulness. When the heel leper knelt down before God, Jesus said, were not 10 cleansed? Where are the others? No one was found to return and give praise to God except the foreigner. So sometimes we get the message and we say to ourselves, I never was able to say thank you to a certain person and I wish I could have. So Pastor Ron went to Sunday school at one time and I went to confirmation class and I had a lady in my congregation in Milwaukee, her name was Mrs. Reinemann, and the pastor asked her if she would teach on Saturday morning the Gospel of John. And so for an hour, this is, uh, this is in the old time when we had lots of time for confirmation. So we had an hour of studying the Bible and an hour of catechism. So one hour with the pastor and one hour with Mrs. Reinemann, who taught us the gospel of John. So Mrs. Reinemann somehow would say to me, every time I saw her, every time I went to church, have you thought about being a pastor? I said, no, 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 I never think about being a pastor. <laughs> And so I went to college, go to college. Maybe I told you this story before. Then I would go to college, and I'd come back to church, and she'd seek me out. And she'd say, have you thought about being a pastor? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm doing something else. I'm going to go into engineering. And uh, I finished college, moved away, and then I went to seminary. I never was able to get back and say thank you to her. But when I preach this sermon, God is sending the message to her. I hope it's never too late that you don't say thank you to someone who's made a difference in your life. Someone who's made an impact. I know Mrs. Reinemann was sent by God she was a signpost to follow that particular path. And I believe that God has sent someone for us to follow a certain path. And maybe we didn't say thank you either for where we are today. The art of gratefulness is to try and do it when we can in person and not when it's too late. All right. None of us like assignments, right? This is like being in the classroom. But I have an assignment for you this morning. I would like each of you to say thank you five times to five different people. Can you do that? five different people today and see what the experience is. Thank you for something that they did. I don't count. You don't have to think, I got the first one right when I get out of church. 
five different people something you're grateful for. And at the end of the day before going to sleep, thank God for your life, your family, and your abundant blessings. And after today, create a plan of showing gratitude every day in your life. That's your assignment. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So, let's uh, sing together. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops and pastors and deacons, inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down the boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore community to those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Especially, we lift up Ray and Lila and Brenda. Give insight to doctors and nurses, home health care aides, hospice, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory, especially Gary. Renew our trust in you, your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life to come. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are going to be taking our offering right now. I guess we don't have an offering song, so... Pray together. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together and pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon each of you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending song. Mm -hmm. 